All right, let's see how long it takes this clock to sell. Bob, hey, it's Bruce. Listen, just saw the clock you posted on Facebook. Or Meta, or whatever. Anyways, I think it will look great in my man cave. So, how does 10 grand sound for it? All right, fine, 20. I'll have Alfred Venway this afternoon. Thanks, Bob. All right, so it's not exactly how this went down, but I will share how I actually sold this clock in one hour later on in the video. To begin this project, we're gonna cut an inch and a half strap, and we're gonna use that as the outside ring to our clock. To cut the inch and a half strap, we're gonna use our horizontal bandsaw. Now we're onto the rolling machine. I'm not too familiar with this machine, but I know one thing for sure is that it can make a circle. This machine has two feeder rollers and a bending roller. As you increase the pressure from the bending roller, it's gonna make the diameter of your piece smaller. So you're gonna start off with a shallow bend with a little pressure, and as you increase the pressure on the bending roller, your diameter is gonna get smaller and you're gonna get closer to the finished product you're looking for. This is more of a baby roller. It's not really meant to be bending huge pieces. So this is kind of the perfect size for doing these smaller projects. Oh, look at that. So with the metal rolled to the shape that I want, I'm gonna take it over, I'm gonna cut the excess off and we're gonna get ready to weld. Welding up a circle is pretty simple. There's really only one seam. So we're gonna clamp it down and we're gonna make that weld. But you wanna take your time because if you weld it too fast, you will warp the circle and it will be misshapen and won't fit your clock. So once the welding is complete, we're gonna let it cool and then we're gonna go back with a flat wheel and we're gonna clean up that weld. In woodworking, you're gonna sand down your project for a better looking piece. In metalwork, you're gonna grind down all your welds for a better looking weld. Now with the metalwork complete, we're gonna move on to making the face of this clock. We're gonna go to the table saw and we're gonna square up these boards. I had made a coffee table previously and I had these leftovers sitting around in my shop for a long time and I've always wanted to make a clock. These pieces were just not quite big enough for what I wanted to make, so I decided I was gonna try and use some epoxy to fill in that void. So for those of you who never really used epoxy, from everything that I understand, you gotta build a form that's gonna hold all the epoxy to keep its shape. The form for this epoxy mold is gonna be super simple. It's basically just a bottom and four sides, just kind of like a little tray to hold the piece and hold the epoxy. Now that all the pieces of the form are cut, we're gonna add some tape. This is gonna help the epoxy not stick to the form once it's all assembled and together. So they do sell epoxy mold release that you can purchase online, but we're gonna try something new today and we're gonna use some tape and a trash bag. So to use the trash bag, I'm just gonna kind of make it a little long to overlap the sides. So I'm not really sure how this is gonna go, but we are gonna find this one out together and we're gonna go for it. When creating the mold, you wanna make sure you seal it as best as possible. Epoxy is not forgiving. It will stick to everything if you do not take the proper steps in the beginning when making your form. So if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, it'll definitely help ease the pain if this does go sideways. After adding the pieces to the form, we're gonna take it over to the epoxy room and we're gonna level her off. Before you're ready to pour the epoxy, you gotta make sure your piece is level. This is gonna make sure that your epoxy is evenly distributed throughout your piece. Now that the piece is perfectly level, we're gonna add some clamps for some added pressure, and that's gonna create a better seal so our epoxy doesn't seep under the piece. This epoxy is a one-to-one -one ratio. When you go to mix it, you wanna use three cups, one for part A, one for part B, and one for the mixture. Along with mixing the epoxy, we're gonna add some mica powder for a little bit of color in this piece. So this is the first time that I've used this mica powder and it's not really what I was hoping for. The product itself worked great. However, I would choose a different color next time. No matter how many projects I've made, if I ever do something that the process just didn't work out very well, I know to avoid that and try a different process in the future. Whether it's not enough material, whether it's too much material, or it's not the color epoxy that you wanted, you're always gonna take something away from it to take to your future projects. When pouring epoxy, bubbles tend to release and rise to the surface, and a way to pop those bubbles is with heat. You can use a torch, you can use a heat gun, you can even breathe on it if you want, but just a little bit of heat will pop those bubbles. I'm really trying to think of a real good, deep explanation as to why I like to use metal and incorporate it into my projects. I just think it looks good. It just gives it a nice, clean, finished, modern look to each piece that I'm making. So now it's the moment of truth, guys. We're gonna see if this trash bag is a disaster or a great idea. Holy Look at that. 
That was like the easiest I think I've ever seen any of that stuff come apart. I was hoping to have to try and like pry it off or something, but that just fell out. So a trash bag. So now that we know that this trash bag works, which I am very happy with, we're gonna take this over to the CNC and we're gonna cut out our clock face. I don't get to use the CNC on all of my projects, but I do love to use it when the project calls for it. The CNC just adds a level of precision and detail that I just can't do by hand. I'm sure I could, but it's just much easier with the CNC. With all the carvings done from the CNC, I'm gonna take it over and I'm gonna paint all the minute marks and numbers with some black spray paint. With all the black spray paint dry, we're gonna take it over and use the router planer to flatten this clock out. So while I flatten this clock out, I'm gonna share the really exciting story of how I sold this clock in less than an hour. Truly and honestly, this was actually a really simple project to sell. So after I finish all my projects, I take a couple pictures and I post them up on my social media pages. And this project really wasn't any different. I posted some pictures and within the hour, somebody reached out and sent me a message and we made a deal and this project was sold. With the first initial sanding complete, we're gonna take it over to the bandsaw and finish our cut of the circle of the face. After the bandsaw, we're gonna use a trim router and use a flush cut trim bit to finish cutting the circle. Once the clock has been trimmed to the final shape, we're gonna start our sanding process. We're gonna start at 80 grit and work our way all the way up to 320. I'm really enjoying the simplicity and the classical look of this clock. Since the epoxy color just didn't go exactly how I wanted, I decided to stain this clock really dark so we can add a little bit of contrast to it. Now this part of the process I should have done earlier on, but we do need to route out a spot for the motor for the clock. To do that, we're gonna take multiple passes at different depths to make sure that we don't hog out too much at once. Now we're gonna put this metal ring on the clock. I did not do a test fit, so I really hope this thing fits. After a little persuasion with my rubber mallet, the metal ring fits nice and snug. With the ring attached, I'm gonna add a polyurethane coat for a protective finish to this piece. Not only is it gonna make this piece pop, but it's also gonna protect it. So if you're looking to make any circles of your own in the future, check out the video here of how I made three DIY circle cutting jigs that you can make yourself. As always guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.